Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tani Isa, professor of pathology. I make these videos for all medical students. Hope someone may find it helpful. We are talking about syphilis. What is syphilis? Syphilis is a chronic venereal disease with multiple presentations caused by Spirochete treponema pallidum subspecies pallidum, referred to simply as treponema pallidum or T pallidum. What are spirochetes? Spirochetes are gram-negative slender corkscrew-shaped bacteria with axial periplasmic flagella wound around the helical protoplasm. These bacteria are covered by a membrane called the outer sheath, and this membrane may mask bacterial antigen and protect the bacteria from the host immune response. Treponema pallidum is too slender to be seen in gram stain, but it can be visualized by silver stain, dark field examination, and immunofluorescent technique. This is a dark field examination of a spirochetes scraped from uh, the base of a chunker. This, as you can see here. Treponema pallidum cannot be grown in culture. So what is the mode of transmission of syphilis? Syphilis is sexually transmitted, is venereal, sexually transmitted disease. So the transmission is acquired, and in the majority of cases, it is venereal. Venereal is the most common way by sexual contact. Sexual contact is the most common mode of spread. But the organisms are very fragile and they can be destroyed rapidly by heat, cold, and drying. So how can it cause all these lesions? Or how can this transmission occur? Most probably, the organisms transmit through an abraded skin or mucous membrane. So sexual transmission most commonly occurred when abraded skin or mucous membrane come in contact with an open lesion. Other way of acquired transmission, though it is rare, it is non-venereal. Non-venereal is rare, but it can occur from needle stick or from blood transfusion. The other way of transmission is the congenital. Congenital is the transmission of infection from infected mother through the placenta to the fetus. So congenital syphilis occurs when treponema pallidum cross the placenta from an infected mother to the fetus. And maternal transmission most frequently occurs during the primary or secondary syphilis when the spirochetes are most numerous. But congenital transmission also occur um, during the passage of the fetus through infected birth canal. So congenital syphilis occur due to transmission of organisms through the placenta or during passage of the fetus through infected birth canal. Because manifestations of maternal syphilis are subtle, a routine serologic testing for syphilis is mandatory in all pregnancies. Incidence. Public health programs and penicillin treatment reduces the number of cases of syphilis in the United States from the late 1940s until the 1970s. Cases of syphilis surged upward in the mid-1980s, reaching a total of 50,000 cases in 1990. Renewed public health effort led to a sharp drop in the incidence of syphilis over the next 10 years. But since 2000, there has been a steady rise in the number of cases reported annually to 10,000 in 2006. Syphilis is divided into three stages with distinct clinical and pathologic manifestations, primary stage, secondary stage, and tertiary stage. Primary stage is the early localized stage of syphilis. It occurs two to three weeks after contact with infected individual, and the site of the lesion is the site of treponemal invasion. Lesion of primary syphilis is called syphilitic chunker or hard sore and it occurs on the genital sites, penis scrotum in male, vulva vaginal wall cervix or anus in the female. Penis or scrotum is involved in 70% of male patients, while the vulva or cervix in 50% of female patients. 
Extragenital sites are the mouth, tongue, lips, fingers, face. Spirochetes are plentiful within the chancre and they can be seen by immunofluorescent stain of a serous exudate. Treponema spread throughout the body by hematologic and lymphatic dissemination even before the appearance of the chancre. So the primary lesion is called chancre or heart sore. As you can see here, the lesion or the heart sore on the penis. The lesion is usually single but may be multiple and it is usually slightly elevated. It starts as firm, reddened, painless, painless, non-itchy papule, which ulcerates. And because it is painless and non-itchy, it may pass unnoticed. It is small usually, but it may reach several centimeters in diameter. The ulcer is shallow, round or oval, with sharp outline, as you can see here, and flat edges and a clean floor and indurated base. What is the base and what is the floor? The floor is what you see, it is clean, and the base is what you feel. And it is the base is indurated because of the fibrosis surrounding it. Syphilitic chancre is very infectious, but it is curable. Uh, so uh, it is curable uh, by proper antibiotics. So the, uh, the syphilis is curable in the first and in the secondary stage. The draining lymph nodes are enlarged, firm, and discrete. It is reactive lymph nodes. Clinically, the primary stage may heal spontaneously with or without treatment. So a history of syphilitic chancre cannot be relied on because in many patients, the primary stage may, may pass unnoticed. This is syphilitic chancre on the scrotum. Now, the extra genital sites of heart chancre, mouth, tongue, or lips. This is a lesion on the tongue and here is on the undersurface of the upper lip. Here's extra genital syphilitic chancre on the left index finger. Microscopic pathology. Here you can see the epithelium is lost and the base of the ulcer contains prominent blood vessels which is surrounded by numerous inflammatory cells, mainly plasma cells, numerous plasma cells, and also lymphocytes. Please remember that obliterative end arthritis and the plasmacetic infiltrate are the hallmark of pathologic features of syphilis. See, here's the, epi the uh, blood vessel. Uh, you can see the vessel with the swollen endothelial cells and proliferation of these endothelial cells and the vessel may be ob completely obliterated and this we call obliterative end arthritis. The base of the ulcer is formed of granulation tissue, necrotic debris, lymphocytes, and the numerous plasma cells. Secondary pyogenic infection may also occur. This is high power view to see that the infiltrate is formed mainly of plasma cells. These are numerous plasma cells. This is the endothelial swelling. Here's beautiful endothelial swelling of the blood vessels and inflammatory infiltrate. And the vessel is nearly obliterated. Here is beautiful swelling of the endothelial cells. Go to, so this is a secondary stage of syphilis. We will talk about the secondary stage in the next video. Thank you so much.